Hello Crypto Tubers, it's JJ aka Cryptographic with a new video series for all you guys. I want to talk a little bit today, I want to bring it back to the basics as you saw in the title, Bitcoin Basics and I want to start a new video series for those of you who are new to the cryptocurrency space or new to learning about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and how to invest, how to trade and all those things and I feel that there's a bit of a, a gap in the market today of people that uh, really understand just the basics, the, the, the bottom level kind of jargon and tech speak for how, um, how the technology works behind cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and, and what has started this whole um, crazy mayhem of, of everyone in the world wanting to be involved with cryptocurrency, wanting to be involved uh, with buying Bitcoin and, and learning about the technology behind the space. So um, without a doubt, the most important part and the most important thing for us to look at uh, to do with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is the technology behind it, uh, which most of you will already know is called a blockchain. And what I want to talk today about is just, just in real basic terms, real easy to understand terms, what is a blockchain? Yeah. What is its intended purpose? Um, what will it be useful for in terms of future applications? Um, what is it useful for now? And how can we most easily understand it? Yeah, so what I wanted to talk about first in real basic terms was just how, how a blockchain works and, and why it is so far superior to the current methods that we have of keeping our records or ledgers of, of our um, financial transactions and, and other things. Why it is so superior, why it has so much promise for so many applications in our lives um, and why so many people are going so crazy about it, including yourself. So basically, in a nutshell, what is a blockchain? Yeah, In a nutshell, a blockchain is basically just a way of keeping records, yeah? At the moment, most of our cryptocurrencies and crypto coins and altcoins and Bitcoin and whatnot are utilizing or using blockchain technology to keep records of what? Financial transactions from peer to peer. So right now the blockchain is chiefly being used as a means of keeping record of peer-to-peer -peer transactions. When I say peer-to-peer, -peer, I mean Harry has his friend Mikey and he wants to send his friend Mikey $20. Instead of the traditional way, which is going through a centralized middleman, in between Harry and Mikey, we have the Westpac Bank or the ANZ Bank or the Bank of Australia or Bank of America, whatever bank it might be. Traditionally, Harry would have to say, I'm going to send my $20 through my centralized intermediary or middleman, the Westpac Bank or whoever it is, and they are going to have to then process the transaction, make a record of the transaction in their centralized server, and then once the transaction has been processed within their framework, only then will the funds clear out to my friend Mikey. I can't remember even the names I started with. I think it was Harry and Mikey. So what we're doing with a blockchain, when we talk of a blockchain in terms of uh, finance, yeah, of in terms of a, a means of sending wealth from, from one person to another, what we're doing is we're taking that situation with Harry and Mikey and the Westpac Bank or whatever bank it is in between, and we're removing that middleman and we're providing Harry and Mikey with a way to process, to record that transaction between just the two of them. And removing that, that centralized point of failure. Yeah. So when we send the money from Harry to Mikey through a centralized middleman, through our bank or whatnot, what we're essentially doing is relying on that middleman to keep good and honest records of that transaction and to keep all the information, to keep all the funds locked away 
safely within their, their little ecosystem that they have yet. But within their ecosystem, we actually have no control of that as, as outside peers. And so what Bitcoin and the blockchain has done is take out that middleman and give the power back on a peer-to-peer -peer basis to Harry and Mikey and, and, and all of us around the world uh, without the need for a, a middleman, an intermediary to process that transaction for us, yeah? So how does the blockchain do this? How does the blockchain process these transactions without the need for a middleman like, like, like the bank that we spoke of in the first example? Well, basically, the blockchain has a decentralized fashion of doing this. So if we took the Bitcoin blockchain, for example, within the Bitcoin network, all around the world is a number of nodes, yeah? And these nodes are all constantly connected into the Bitcoin network and they all have a constantly changing, constantly growing ledger or record. This is the blockchain that is noting down all of the, the individual transactions that take place within Bitcoin. And the reason it's called a blockchain is because it, it, it's a constantly changing series of blocks, each linked to the next block that is constantly growing and constantly filling with transactions. Each block has a certain amount of transactions or is a certain size and is then, once it's completed, put on into the record or the ledger. And the beautiful thing about the blockchain and about its immutable or unchangeable nature is that it is spread around the world, around the network in a decentralized way. So. In the first example, when we mentioned the Westpac bank or, or whatever bank you use, all of the information and the entire ledger was concentrated with the intermediary, the middleman, the centralized uh, you know, force, the centralized group of people or, or corporation, whatever it may be. There was a centralized place or, or you know, server or, or whatnot where all the information was contained and Mikey and Harry have to rely on that centralized entity to keep all of that information safe, to make sure that it's all honest and to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no problems within that and that it's all processed uh, in a truthful and trustworthy manner, yeah? So with Bitcoin and the blockchain that Bitcoin brought into existence when Satoshi Nakamoto first published the white paper and when it first came into the, the general public's knowledge, that control is spread out across that entire network around the world and not tied down to that, that middleman. That there is no, in, in, in the simplest way to put it is that instead of there being a single point of failure, there is now no single point of failure. The idea is that it's spread out across all the nodes, across all the, the, the participators in the network and there is no centralized point of failure. There is no centralized place where a malicious actor or someone wanting to do the network harm could attack and then, uh, and then you know, disrupt the flow of information or, or somehow cook the books or, or change, uh, you know, alter previous transactions that had already been confirmed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, with a blockchain, there becomes another completely different group of, of, of problems to solve and there's, there is a completely different attack vector, so to speak, where uh, malicious actors attack the network in a different way and there is, of course, still security flaws within the original Bitcoin blockchain and there are still ways to attack that. But generally speaking, when you compare the method of using a centralized intermediary like, like your bank to send value from point A to point B. And when you change that method and, and bring it into a blockchain where point A then has a method to send their value straight to point B via a network that uh, can be trusted as keeping the information uh, safe and keeping the information truthful, you are removing a lot of the risk 
and a lot of the problems that we've seen over many, many years uh, that arise from keeping your information source with a centralized entity, yeah? So, I mean, this the technology of a blockchain can lead on from, from financial, I mean, right now we're mainly seeing it in the financial sector, but it can lead on from finances into many other areas of our lives to do with medical records or land ownership or identification. Uh, you know, you, you can remove the need for passports and that kind of thing and, and now really start to communicate directly within the people of the world without the need for intermediaries and middlemen. Yeah, so there are a lot of applications with the blockchain is promising and, and starting to show that it's able to solve. Right now, we're only really seeing products within the financial sector, but to simplify it again, a blockchain is simply a method of keeping a record, yeah? It's a method of keeping a record in a decentralized way. Decentralized meaning that the information and the security of that record is not concentrated to a single centralized entity. Rather, it is spread out across a network which is designed to increase the attack vector, to increase the, 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 the way in which a malicious actor or an enemy would attack so far spread out that it makes it near impossible um, or very difficult to do, to attack, to change, yeah? And the idea is that once something goes into that record, goes into that blockchain, it is then unchangeable, it can't be changed, the record is there for good, and if you ever need to refer back to that record uh, to confirm something that may or may not happen in the future, that you can know full well that it is truthful and good and that it hasn't been tampered with, it hasn't been changed. Yeah, so in a nutshell, that's what blockchain is. I aim with this series, back to Bitcoin basics, to look at many things, delving in deeper to how a blockchain works, to what the different algorithms that support a blockchain can be from proof of work to proof of stake to delegated proof of stake to other types of blockchains if they could even be called blockchains like IOTA's Tangle or Hashgraph or Rayblox's Block Lattice. Um, you know, various different points of uh, programming language basically but I aim to dumb it down so that someone who's a complete beginner in the marketplace can really understand and relate to, to what those different terms and, and jargon means. I mean, I in university, I studied languages. Um, I'm fluent in a couple of languages other than my own and I love to research and understand the different ways in which people talk with each other and communicate with each other. So for me, I think that's where, that's where I can really relate to, to the blockchain and cryptography in the sense that it is a language. Uh, there are certain rules that you can compare to maybe grammatical rules in the English language or, or grammatical rules in other languages. Um, and I really see it as a language to be learned. So this is part of the, the, the stuff that really excites me when I read about it and research about it and learn about it and stuff like that. So I w I've created this series to try and be um, an intro to the complete beginner to try and really have a have a, a new grasping a new understanding of what the blockchain is what Bitcoin is what cryptocurrency is and how it actually can affect you in your life rather than just How can I make money off this? How can I choose a good coin coin to buy? You know, how can I uh, trade and get rich off this? I aim for this series to really be for people to gain a bigger understanding in simple terms simple and easy to understand terms uh, of the blockchain and cryptocurrency as a whole so that we can all band together and really get behind this technology and, and, and help help it change the world for the better, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Any newcomers, be sure to join the Discord. We have the Cryptographic Discord. We have a ton of really skilled, really educated, really good people on every skill level. 24 hours a day you will find someone chatting in there. Uh, whether your question is to do with mining, to do with trading, to do with easy stuff like setting up wallets or setting up an exchange account and buying various cryptocurrencies, no matter what your question is, no matter what the hour of the day is, you will find someone in there ready to answer that question. So we have people really on every level. Um, I love the community that we have in there yeah. and I would love you guys to come along and join it. So thanks again for tuning in. This is JJ, aka Cryptographic.
Peace out.